In this session we're going to introduce inheritance tax. Now inheritance tax is a tax that is paid on transfers of wealth, um, sometimes referred to as transfers of capital, by individuals. Now a transfer of wealth um, occurs when an individual intentionally gives away some or all of their wealth. Um, and this can either be done via them just gifting assets to another person or it can be done as a transfer at less than the full value of that um, of that asset but it has to be done intentionally um, now when we think about inheritance tax um, whether a person is UK domiciled or not does have an effect on um, how the tax is calculated. Um, for a UK domiciled individual, um, inheritance tax would be um, charged on all of the individual's worldwide assets. Um, but if um, we're dealing with uh, a non-UK domiciled individual, someone who's a foreign national, then um, they would only uh, incur inheritance tax on assets that are located in the UK. Alright, so on what is inheritance uh, tax charged? Well, it's charged on the value of certain types of gifts or transfers of wealth and the individual's wealth at the point of death and we um, typically refer to that as their death estate. Um, it's charged at a number of rates um, and these rates are available to you in the um, assessment in the tax tables. So there is a nil rate band on the first £325,000. Then any amounts above £325 will be taxed at 40%. Um, but there is also an additional rate that's charged on certain types of lifetime transfers of wealth um, and we'll look at those separately. Okay, in our next section I want to talk about some of the gifts that individuals might make during their lifetime. Um, now because the government doesn't want the situation where an individual gives away the vast majority of their wealth um, just before their death in order to avoid um, inheritance tax, um, the rules tell us that we've got to include the value of certain types of gifts that have been made by an individual when we're uh, making our inheritance tax calculations. Um, but there are types of gifts where we don't have to take um, uh, these gifts into account when calculating inheritance tax. Um, these types of gifts are exempt. Now there are some types of gifts that have um, no implications for inheritance tax purposes. These are exempt and some of them are given to you in the tax tables. So for instance if an individual gives uh, gifts to uh, friends and relatives of up to £250 each per tax year, these are classed as small gifts and we don't have to um, take them into account. Then there are a number of uh, gifts that can be given on an individual's marriage. Um, so for instance a parent can give up to £5,000 to their child um, uh, on their wedding um, and that would be exempt. And we've got the same uh, or similar situations for grandparents from one of the parties to the marriage to the other and from anybody else. So two and a half thousand from a, a gift from a gra grandparent um, will be exempt from um, IHT. Uh, lastly, there is also an annual exemption. Any individual can give up to £3,000 per tax year um, to anyone they like and that would be exempt. But there are also other exempt give gifts. Um, for instance, any normal expenditure out of your income would be classed as an exempt gift uh, or 
could, um, would be exempt from inheritance tax. Uh, if you transfer um, uh, amounts of money, assets, um, from one spouse to another or between civil partners, these are exempt. Uh, also, if um, there are capital transfers for family maintenance, such as um, those that we might see following a divorce, again, those transfers would be exempt from IHT. And also, you can make gifts to charities and political parties without there being any inheritance tax implications. Next, I just want to make one or two further points regarding this annual exemption of £3,000. Um, so, when we have a situation where an individual gifts um, some assets and they don't fall into uh, the other exempt types of gifts, then that £3,000 will apply to those gifts. Um, if you have any unused part of the annual exemption, then that can be carried forward but just to the next tax year. Um, it can't be carried forward any further. Um, so for example, we have Gobi who's gifted £1,000 in cash in 2015-16 and £9,000 in cash in 2016-17. Now in 2015-16, the annual exemption of £3,000 will cover that £1,000 in cash that was made in that year. So there will be no inheritance tax implications of Gobi making that gift. Um, but Gobi did not use up all of the £3,000 annual exemption, uh, so he still has £2,000 which can then be um, carried forward and set against any gifts that are made in 2016-17, the following year. So in 2016-17, um, Gobi made that £9,000 cash gift. Well, we can use both the annual exemption for 2016-17 of £3,000, but we can also use the unused exemption of £2,000 from the previous tax year. So, Gobi will therefore end up um, having a gift that is relevant for inheritance tax purposes of £4,000 in 2016-17. Okay, we've looked at some of the gifts, but um, how do we value gifts or transfers of wealth? Well, for inheritance tax purposes, uh, the value of a gift or a transfer of wealth um, is valued differently from the way that we would value it for a um, for capital gains tax purposes. For inheritance tax purposes we look at by how much the individual's wealth has fallen rather than the value of the gift itself. Now this is known as the diminution of value principle. Now you might think surely the amount that is given will have the same value as the um, diminution of the individual's wealth. And that is the case in most situations, but it's not necessarily so. We'll go through an example to illustrate this. So let's say that an individual owns 51% of the shares in a company and they give away 2% of the shares, leaving 49%. Well, the value of those 2% of shares will be relatively low. Let's say that they have a market value of £1,000. But the fall in value of the donor's wealth will be significantly in excess of that £1,000 because previously they had control over that company because they owned the majority of the shares in it. But now they don't. So, um, the fact that they have given away these shares and lost some control over the business will have a value of more than £1,000. And it is this fall in value that is um, uh, taken into account when we're dealing with inheritance tax. So, let's have an illustration. So we have Alphonse who owns 600 shares in a company which has 1,000 shares in issue. So Alphonse owns 60% of the shares. 
So he obviously has control over that business. And he then gives his daughter Frida 150 shares in his company. So he now only owns 450 shares. That's less than 50% of the company. Now, the 150 shares um, have a value of £50 each to Frida. Um, but they did have a value of £120 each to Alphonse when he owned all 600 shares. So um, after that gift has been made, if we value Alphonse's shares, they're no longer going to have a value of £120 each. It's going to be less because of that loss of control over the business. So let's say that they have a value now of £90 each. Still more than the value of those shares to Frida because Frida simply owns 15% of the company whilst Alphonse still owns 45% a significant shareholding and one which we would expect to uh, provide uh, significant influence over the business. So we calculate how Alphonse's wealth has fallen. We start with the value of the shares um, or Alphonse's shares before the gift. So that's 600 shares at £120 each, 72,000. We then look at the value of his shares after the gift has been made. So there we've got 450 shares but each are now valued at £90. That's £40,500 in total. So the fall in value is 31,500. So when we're looking at um, the gift in terms of inheritance tax, that gift has a value of £31,500. Of course, the value of the gift to Frieda is just 7500 That's 150 shares at £50 each. And indeed, um, the value of the gift for capital gains tax purposes as well would also be 7500 Um, we've also got um, the, the situation of how we value a gift of shares in a listed company. Now, for the vast majority of people, um, an individual does not own um, a significant amount of shares in a listed company. So here, we would use the uh, listed share prices that are reported on the stock market. Um, but when prices are, are reported for the stock market, we typically see two prices being reported. So for instance, we might have 530 to 540 pence, which begs the question, which one do we choose? Well, the price that we use for valuing gifts of these types of shares is calculated as follows. We take the lower price and then we add one quarter of the difference between the two prices. So for our above example, we would start with 530, the lower price, and then we would add a quarter of the difference between 540 and 530. So here, the price that we would use when valuing uh, a gift of these types of shares would be 532.5 pence per share. So we've now looked at some um, uh, types of gifts that are exempt from inheritance tax and we've also looked at how we would value certain types of assets that are gifted or transferred at uh, less than their value. Um, that would leave an individual with some types of gifts that do have to be taken into account when we calculate inheritance tax. And of these, we have two main types. We have CLTs, which stands for Chargeable Lifetime Transfers, and we've got PETs, which is, stands for Potentially Exempt Transfers. And we're going to be looking at these um, in uh, a later session.